Hello snowboarders of the internet, I am your host TC and today I will be reviewing the LibTech TRS aka the Total Ripper series. This board is equipped with LibTech C3 profile so what that means is you're going to have camber underneath your feet with a tiny reverse camber in between your feet and a short flat section on the tail and the nose. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to drive, pop and snap this board but also give you the foot steer ability and a little bit extra float there in the nose or the tail if you get into that fresh powder. This board comes in a 154, a 157, a 157 wide, a 159, a 159 wide, and a 162. I rode this board at Steamboat Springs where it was literally two different days. Pretty much in the morning, it was super flat light, super icy, death cookies everywhere. I pretty much looked like the groomer was drunk. Like they were not smooth by any means. It looked like they wanted to be smooth, but they weren't. As the day went on though, the sun poked out. It got super warm, super slushy, where it felt like a beautiful spring day. The snow got super slow, but still didn't stop me from having a good time. I used my Ride Fuse boots and Jones Mercury bindings. When we're talking overall flex on this board, it is coming in at that mid stiff where it is very fluid from nose to tail and torsionally as well, where when you torsionally steer in this thing, you're going to feel it. You're going to definitely notice some resistance, especially when approaching rails and making those micro adjustments. Now, when you go into the stability section, it is a crazy stable board, crazy damp where you don't really feel any micro vibrations. Like in the morning when I was riding it, I didn't feel any of those death cookies until I was like pretty much on top of them, like just almost sliding around. But that has nothing to do with the board. Those are just chunks of ice. And it really handled all of that slushy conditions as well, where you could just pretty much surf it out and just trust that you're not gonna get bucked around on any push piles or anything like that. When you're loading this board up for an ollie, it feels very smooth. You just pretty much like a classic snowboard ollie, lean back and it'll just propel you forward where it doesn't buck you or anything like that or like snap you to the moon, but it's definitely there and it's definitely gonna help you. Now, when you take it off at jumps, it feels very stable. You can set that edge when you're going to spin and not have to worry about that magnet traction slowing you down or feeling like it's gripping a little bit too hard. And pretty much when you go to land on it, off of a spin, you can just set that edge and just trust that it is gonna stop your rotation. It felt very smooth and you could literally take it off at any size jump that you feel comfortable going off of. While I have you, make sure you like, subscribe, click that bell and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of the other programming we have coming out. When you're going on the tail or the nose on this to butter, it is gonna fight you. It's definitely gonna have some resistance there, but just expect it and expect a little bit of a pop out on it as well. So when you're going to spin out of butters, it's not gonna be a problem. If you know how to butter, it's not gonna be a problem. Just keep that in mind, it is gonna have some resistance there. Now when you translate that into jibbing, it is not the same I would say where I did not feel comfortable sliding this thing sideways. I had a real bitch of a time trying to tail press or nose press it on rails where I just felt good on 50 50 ing this. When I did slide it sideways, it felt pretty catchy where I was like, okay, a couple times I'm done doing that. I don't want to do it anymore. And I think a lot of that had to do with how stiff it was and the, that coupled with the magnet traction, it just felt a little bit grabby on rails. This board on icy conditions is gonna grip. It's gonna carve very well. It is easy to turn over on those short, quick carves. When you do get into these slushier conditions, however, it isn't gonna be quite the same. I can feel that magnet traction on that soft snow just digging in. And when I did go for a Euro carve on that soft snow, I felt a little bit of boot bite. So keep that in mind where if you're on any firm snow or just regular winter snow, I would say it's gonna do just fine. It's when you get into that softer stuff, it becomes less precise. Rider in mind. This board is made for somebody that definitely wants to hit the large jump line and ride big transition, but they don't want to get pigeonholed there. They want to be able to go out on the mountain and really go drop some cliffs and pretty much just fly down without having to worry about being able to hold an edge or anything like that. If you enjoy the content that we're putting out, but you want to support us further, head on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. We have a great video over there explaining everything in depth. I enjoyed hitting jumps on this board, 
but not so much on rails, I would say, where definitely excels on the jumps. A little too stiff for my personal taste on rails, but maybe if they mellowed out the mag a little bit on it, it would be a bit more versatile in that section. But overall, still a fun, snappy board that can hold an edge like no other, nice and damp. But I mean, that's just classic Lib Tech traits right there, really. Overall, a good board. And definitely if you're that more aggressive transition rider, it's definitely gonna be a good board for you. Comparable boards. The Capita Outsiders, the Nitro Beast, and the Ride Burnout. Recommended bindings, the Bent Metal Transfer, the Jones Mercury, and the Solomon Highlander. This has been my review of the LibTech TRS, AKA the Total Ripper series. If you enjoyed it, why don't you go check out one of the videos in our catalog that is crazy extensive. I'm sure we're gonna have something else you like.